Welcome, everybody. This is Games Over Plastic, episode number 18. I am Midnight. As always, I am joined by the two most Chad people in the gaming podcast spheres. First of all, we have the master of graphics. That's right. I'm switching the order up. We're mixing it up today. We have the ginger who has relocated back up to the Midwest. Hodge, how you doing, sir? Are you you're muted, right. sir? We're off to a great start. We're a fantastic yeah, start, professional great, podcast. Great. Well, because you should go second, so I muted myself. I threw you off. Got to be on your toes. Got to be on your toes. I know, I know. I messed up. Um, but I'm doing good. I'm tired. Uh, I one shot the drive back up to my parents. I'm at my parents' house for about a week, and that is a 17 hour drive, not including stops. So. I left at 4 a.m. I got up here. I actually made good time. I got up here at like 9.15 p.m. So it was only uh, whatever that is, 16, 17 hour drive. So I was able to I was able to chop out a uh, couple uh, like an hour and a half despite stopping. I only had to stop twice because my car is a hybrid, so it's able to drive about 500 miles before I need to fill. So I was able to only have to do two stops. So. But uh, yeah, it's I'm back up north. Going to start a new job here in a couple weeks, and uh, but yeah, I'm ready to go. And dude, I, the fall weather though. Oh my god, I'm just so happy to have it. Have moments where it's 50, 60 degrees outside. That's my favorite weather. So I'm so happy to be back up. In this. <laughs> All right. Well, I was going to say we're happy to have you back, but I'm I'm not a Midwesterner anymore. I move south, so. Um, but yeah, welcome. It's funny. You experienced the absolute worst, um, of being in Texas the summer and you're, then you Mm -hmm. move back up and you're about to experience the worst of living up North because it's going to be frozen winters soon. So that's great. Yep. Uh, somehow you, you got both. Most of my jobs. Yeah. Well, the the heat down South wasn't the bad part. Like I don't care about being outside in 90, hundred degree weather. It's being up in those attics that were 130, 140 degrees. That was the worst and up north we have basements instead of attics so i mean we do have attics but uh our stuff is most hvac stuff is in the basement so i'm able to go to cool basements (laughs) instead of scorching hot deadly freaking attics so yeah i'll 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 take that trade-off i'm okay with it there we go and then last but not least we have the man the myth the legend the coach and the teacher and the weeb Sean Mason, how you doing, sir? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here. Happy for Hodge that he's in his ideal weather situation right now. It's definitely fall. It's fall up here in uh, New England as well. Leaves are changing colors. I have to rake some leaves um, probably later today, uh, hopefully, if I feel like it. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Mets are on later. I'm pretty hyped. I'm oh, pretty yeah. All in postseason mode. So, yeah, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to talk about some great games, though. Oh, yeah, we're definitely going to do that. All right, boys. So introductions are done. Let's get into the administrative stuff, the boring stuff. As always, this is Games Over Plastic, the podcast for the agnostic gamers coming to you on all podcast services worldwide. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, Pocket Cast, every cast. If you're listening to the audio version, just know that there is a video version that is always available to you with cameras, graphics, uh, nip slips and everything. So we got it all. There is a link in the description of the audio version, which will take you right to the video if you want. You can also just go to youtube.com slash at games over plastic and you'll find us. Subscribe. We're trying to hit 100 subs. Leave us likes. Leave us comments. If you have a write in for the show, which we're going to read one later, you leave that on YouTube in the comment section. Leave your little comment, your awesome comment, and then you can put a write in and say, Hey guys, what's your favorite this or what do you think about that? And we will answer your questions on the show if we if we can. All right, so that's that. Thank you guys. We appreciate you. And with all that said, let's get into some gaming discussion. And we are going to talk about what we are playing. And let's go ahead and start it off with Sean Mason, shall we? What have you been playing, Sean? Yeah. Oh, I've been playing uh, a number of games to start. I'm going to start off with just going to give you guys a little update on Plucky Squire. I wasn't really feeling it last main episode. I decided to give it another shot and I was playing a little bit of it, enjoying it a little bit more and a little bit more. And then all of a sudden 
I started encountering these bugs where my sword would disappear and I it, it kind of reverted me back to like a chapter one state where you don't have a sword and you can't like roll and you kind of just are running around, but I'd still be in like the chapter that I'm in. So, you hmm. know, kind of broke the game, but they have this like intricate, um, not intricate, but like this auto save system where you can reload past saves. So I'd reload a past save and it'd be fine. Then I got to chapter six and you get this new mechanic called like the stamp mechanic. And right when I got the stamp mechanic, my all my action command buttons, like my sword, my roll, my jump with like a, you have like a rocket jet pack on. I just can't use them anymore. Like, doesn't matter. I've tried reloading saves. It just doesn't work. Nothing works. And it completely broke the game for me. And I'm like, I'm, I'm good. I'm not going to stress myself replaying this right now. Um, I was, like, really aggravated about it, like, to the point where I spent, like, hours trying to, like, fix it. Like, reload past saves, shut my PS4, um, PS5 off, um, turn it on, uh, deal, delete the game and reinstall it. Nothing worked. So I was, like, I was a little disappointed. Especially because I had started encountering those bugs with, like, the sword part. So, yeah, so Plucky Squire is, like, a no-go for me right now until they fix that. And apparently, they were supposed to release a patch that fixed it, and, and nothing was released that fixed it. So, I'm like, all right, well, I'll just take a break from that. Yeah. Unfortunate. Okay. That, that really sucks, because I was actually debating finally hopping into it after kind of... Hearing the mixed reviews, but hearing that you were liking it the second time and all like I was kind of I was like, oh, sweet, it's time to hop in. But hearing that, I'm like, well, I guess it's it's kind of like um, the Benedict Fox game that came out, I think, last year. Uh, I loved it. I was enjoying it so much until there was just a bug that brought me back to the beginning of the game and everything was locked again. I lost all my power. Like it just, my save was lost. And so I was so pissed off despite loving the game. Like it, I liked it more than even people were just reviewing the, it for the gameplay. I liked it more, but I, it broke. And I was like, well, I'm done. I can't do this then. I'm not replaying this game. Maybe one day if they fix it, but I'm not doing it now. And so hearing that plucky squire, hopefully they keep it going and fix that kind of stuff. Cause I do want to hop in one day and try it. Yeah. It was definitely frustrating, but you know, hopefully, yeah. hopefully it's fixed. Um, all right. But that got me to finally decide, you know what? I'm going to boot up Astrobot. So I started playing Astrobot and man, woof. This game is freaking awesome. I absolutely love this game. Um, I don't want to spoil like any of the character, like the, any of the Sackboy cameo. I mean, Sackboy, the uh, Astrobot cameo appearances, because um, it is so good. Uh, the platforming is super smooth. It definitely reminds me of like a Mario game. It has that polish that like the Nintendo games have. Um, I love how expanded it is. It feels like a huge expansion to it feels like the playroom that was like bundled in with the ps5 was like a demo that's what it feels like it feels like that was like the demo version and this is the full game mm -hmm. and it's awesome yeah. like every time i'm constantly smiling playing it i'm constantly just like thrown with nostalgia even stuff that like i didn't play as a kid or just references like that i didn't didn't like didn't have any reference to like i know i'm like oh i know what that is or oh that looks so familiar let me look it up and then i look it up and be like oh my gosh i remember this now i remember this from like seeing commercials for it it's so good. I'm like close to the end. I'm in like the, like the, it's like, I don't want to say what it is. It's like the, uh, it's like the fifth, like world overall world, not mm. like a level, but like the fifth overall world. Um, it's so good. I'm trying yeah. to savor every moment of it. I'm trying to say I'm saving every Astrobot as I go though. So like, um, if I, if I miss something, I just go hop right back in. It's so good. Um, highly recommend it. Especially if you, even if you don't like platformers, highly, highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna play it. I just don't know when. It, it's in it's in the <laughs> backlog. It, it'll get played at some point. Yeah, good, it's, good. it's. I think you'll like it. I'm sure I will. I, yeah, I mean, because if you're a game plays, I mean, I know obviously you play longer games that have really good like fleshed out plots. But if you're if you, even if you just want a game that's just a game plays king type game, because obviously the plot of Astrobot's really dumb. It's you're riding around on your PS5 spaceship and an alien comes and steals the parts and puts them in the five worlds that you have to go to. So it's literally you just basically you go save the SSD and the GPU and the CP like it's literally all you're doing is the plot. So like I don't feel bad spoiling any of that. It's really just 
the worlds and the characters and stuff. That's kind of the like, oh, wow, I can't believe they put this character in the game kind of thing. Yeah. So that's where the jo- enjoyment comes from. It's really about the gameplay and the, the and, and just the love it's of like PlayStation. Gorgeous. It's also gorgeous. It's like oh, it's such yeah. a gorgeous game to look at. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's truly it's truly rem- and awesome. It's it's crazy yeah. how fast they made it, too. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, Astrobot and then. I've been playing on my Switch, a highly anticipated game, Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. Woo, this game is freaking awesome. Like, I had really high expectations coming in, like as I do for most um, Zelda games, but I've been blown away with this. Um, Right away, if you're familiar with A Link to the Past, the map is almost like, you can see like all the hints that this map is the same exact, almost like one-to-one recreation in that cool um art style that they have but they add in like subtle little changes that make it different so it's not like oh i'm just playing a link to the past again and zelda is so cool she has it's so funny that it's like the inverse of link so like link has like you know he has unlimited sword power and he has limited magic that's the opposite for zelda where she has all the magic and limited like sword power well power for like when she's using her like summons and it's Mm -hmm. so cool that you can just like summon like anything you conjure up that like you find you can run around like the world with like a like a mattress and it's so cool it's so much fun i'm at the end of the game there i know i'm in the last like i'm in the last look yeah i'm in the last dungeon right now and it's just so much fun and the art style again is gorgeous it doesn't run the greatest on switch it runs better than Link's awakening though i will give it that it does run better than Link's awakening where and Link's Awakening, there were points where it was definitely chugging. Uh, they definitely worked on that with this game. But yeah, I if you like Zelda, like especially the top-down Zelda, I'm going to stop calling it 2D Zelda. It's top-down Zelda, because it's really not 2D. It's like top-down. If you like top-down Zelda or Zelda in general, you're going to love this. And it, it is pretty cool to play as her in general. It's like reverse, you know, role reversal where you're trying to rescue Link and save everyone. Mm-hmm. Um it is really cool though to see that a link to the past map in that art style too. It's a huge fan of that game. Um, yeah, but yeah, I'm loving it. Um, I highly suggest it to everyone. It's it's so good and it's funny. Some of my students were talking about it. They're like, "Oh, do you see that? Uh, I'm playing the game when you play a Zelda." I'm like, "They're like, Mr. Mason, you know they made a Zelda game. We play a Zelda." I'm like, "Yeah, I've been playing it. I know. Don't worry." <laughs> nice, silly children. Um, of course I am. I know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah it, it, it's, it's really good. <laughs> Yeah, That's I'm awesome. excited to hop into it. I, I I haven't been really wanting to buy any games right now just because since I don't start my next job, I'm kind of, you know, save the cash a little bit. So once I'm working, I probably will. I'll hop into it. So it's going to be a little late, but I am excited, especially since how much I loved Link's Awakening playing it a couple months ago. I was loving it so much that I am so excited for Echoes of Wisdom. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to have to wait a little bit just to just to give my wallet a rest for a little bit until I am have that income coming back in (laughs) right on yeah that game looks pretty cool um i saw some gameplay i was watching a review video of it spoiler free review and it looks cool um obviously i don't have a switch maybe i'll get to that someday on the switch too who knows if they port i would i would highly i would highly suggest it Right on. I think you are playing one more game, aren't you? I'm excited yeah, about this I'm, one. I'm playing one more game. Spooky Season, so I booted up Until Dawn. It's a game that me and uh, my wife, Claire, are playing, so we're playing nice. it together. I'm sorry for the glare in my camera right now. There's like The sun is just like coming through this window right now, and usually it doesn't do that. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, Until Dawn, um, it's a great game. I'm playing the PS4 version. I'm not playing the PS5 version, so I wasn't going to... I already own the PS4 version, so I wasn't going to spend the money again especially for a game that like I didn't know if I was going to like or not because the first time I tried it, I got like 20 minutes in and I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Um, but I am enjoying this. We played about like four and a half to five hours of it in like one sitting last weekend. Um, nice. I don't know. How long is the game? I don't even know how long it is. I'm not sure either. <sighs> 15 hours, maybe. That's okay. So, all right. So we're, we're about like a third of the way through, I'd say. Um, it's rather interesting. Some of the, some definitely like stereotypical, like nineties horror, like scream it gives me a lot of scream vibes with some of the stuff. It's like, it's horror, but like some of the stuff is supposed to be like tropey and funny kind of. Um, but some of the decisions you make are like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And you don't have like unlimited time to decide. So you're like, oh my gosh, I got to make the decision quick. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Um, it is interesting, um, to just like run around and it's very creepy that, 
like you're up there you know the power goes out they lose the cell it, it's cool how they 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 since it's set in the modern times like everyone has cell phones so it's like oh no like the cell towers are down it's a huge storm and um i'm liking it um i don't know which characters like i'm like explicitly trying to save especially because like i don't know some decisions that um i've made where i'm like oh i think this decision will be good and then ends up being like no what look that was a terrible decision what was i thinking um but yeah it's fun so far i'm enjoying it i am definitely gonna i'll have it done by next episode so i can really dive in and talk about it and tell you who my favorite characters are i think the performances are really good though i think i think they did a really good job with the performances especially i got some big name actors and actresses in here so yeah i'm enjoying it it's fun it's a good spooky game start off that spooky season until dawn yeah, I kind of I kind of want to go back to it, especially with the hype of it being re-released. I'm I'm bummed. It, I was actually kind of looking forward to buying it again on PS5 because I did love this game. But hearing that it's more busted than the old version, I'm like, I might just go back and replay the first one again because I do. I, I love this game. I actually also just looked it up. It says eight to ten hours. So you're probably a little over halfway. Oh, I'm like halfway um, through that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's not I, I don't think this is a spoiler. So but you can save or kill basically as many characters as you want. It's a very your consequences matter kind of game. And uh, when I originally played it, I think I saved about half the people just because, yeah, like you said, you think you're making a right choice, but like a horror movie, you think you're going in the right door, but you're not going in the right door kind of thing. So it's, I love that aspect of it. I wish that they had recreated it with like those, uh, whatever like the little anthology series that they did after i was hoping oh that yeah those yeah dark picture dark pictures anthology yeah dark picture yeah, yeah that's what it is yeah i was hoping those would be good because i wanted to hop into them but hearing that they're all basically like sixes i'm like uh, maybe one day if i if they have like a you know a cheap collection 20 bucks for all of them or kind of that kind of thing i might hop into them one day but yeah i really like until dawn so i'm happy you're enjoying it the second way through yeah, yeah definitely um, going back to going back to like that that like the, the decision making like there's a character her name's S- S- Sam or Samantha. I like I really wanted to like we really wanted to save her and then we made a decision that like we're like oh this is definitely going to be like fine and then we're like what and then she ends up dying. I was like what? Was yeah, that the first character? one? Was that the first one who dies? Or no? Well, it depends. Well, there's a cliff, I don't know, no, I don't know if it's a, cl- like... a cliff event, right? Oh, that's the opening of the game. The that's the opening event. of the game, yeah, the no, cliff event. No. Okay, because I don't think. I, no, I'm not, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil like how the person dies. Yeah. Um, but, um, but we were we were like we we're like definitely this is gonna be great. She's gonna be fine, and then she died, and we're like, oh, that that's great. So now we're like really like okay, now I kind of kind of try to really narrow down. We got to figure out what we're gonna do with these decisions. But it, overall, it's good. Good experience. The yeah, illusion of choice. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, that's who Sam is. Yeah, it's it's Hayden Penetier's character. Mm. Okay. Yeah, you got to save the cheerleader. Yeah. You guys remember that show, Heroes? Save the cheerleader, save Pretty the world. Show. Yeah. I heard after Pretty the first season, it went downhill. It went downhill at some point. I don't remember when it was. It was. It was good for yeah. I think a season or two, or What'd maybe even three. What Heroes. Show Sorry. Heroes. Oh, I never watched it. Yeah, I never yeah, watched I didn't it. either. I just heard it went to shit after the first. Everyone I loved the first season, and I heard after the first, I went to shit, so I didn't bother going watching it. Yeah. All right, well, good stuff, Sean. I was excited to hear about that game. I actually didn't play that game, but I watched a full playthrough of it on YouTube. So I saw the whole story and all the choices and stuff, and I thought it, it, it looked awesome. I really liked the story and the choices. I do actually want to play it for myself. I was, like Hodge, looking forward to this remaster remake thing. Um, so I will probably play that once they've released some patches and got the bugs out fixed because I'm sure they'll get it under control. And then there's like a gnat flying around this piece of crap. Anyway, good stuff though, Sean, I'm glad you're playing a spooky game and I think you chose a good one. Yeah. Those Wendigos are pretty scary. Yeah. 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 The Wendigos. All right. Shall we move on to Hodge? What are you playing, sir? I'm playing or I just started this morning a scary game because I wanted to get into the Hollywood or Hollywood Halloween spirit. Uh, I'm wearing even my Halloween town shirt right now. But uh, so I started Evil Within because I've been putting it off for about a decade and I fell off almost immediately because I am not that big into it. 
I uh, I played the first two chapters. Uh, the first chapter was a slog. It was the oh you're injured, so you kind of have to slowly walk through the room, kind of. Um, and I'm like, every time that even in The Last of Us, which is a game I love, when you're like Joel after the attack and you're just like slowly walking to the hospital, I'm like, this could have been a cutscene. I didn't need to interact with this. It's just, just make it a cutscene. I don't want to play this slow motion limping fucking character. And so uh, I was really turned off right at the beginning. And this, but I'm like, you know, what? it's just the opening. It's the title card hasn't even popped up yet. So I'm going to keep going. And then the second one. And but then you get out of the so you get hurt. And like I said, you're limping. You get in the elevator, the credits roll, and then you get out of the elevator and you're walking fine again. I'm like, so that leg injury is just magically healed. <laughs> like, yeah. this is yeah, a horror movie. Off. Yeah, um, but then the second uh, mission, you're like in a forest and it's a little better. Uh, it's just kind of a sneak around survival horror. And it's not it's not a terrible game. It's just not grabbing me nearly as much as like Resident Evil does. Or hopefully that Silent Hill game is after hearing it's great. I do want to hop into it. Um, but yeah, it's really just not grabbing me. And people are saying that this is the better of the two. And I'm just like. I don't know. I I might try and give it just a little more a chapter or two more, but as of right now, it is really not grabbing me. I just don't, I don't want to write off a game after like 45 minutes hour of gameplay. But if, it, if like another chapter or two go by and I'm not enjoying my time, I'm going to drop it. But yeah, I, I'm kind of disappointed because I've been excited to play this game for a while. It's been, I actually bought it years ago and just never played it. Cause I just never found the time. And so now that it's spoopy season, I'm like, yeah, let's do it before because I'm going to play Alan Wake 2 again soon. But before I do yeah. that, I was like, you know what? I'll uh, I'll cleanse the palate with a different horror game. And yeah, it's not grabbing me. So either next episode, I'll say I've beaten it or I'll be playing Alan Wake instead. <laughs> so, Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Sean, did you ever play that? Yeah, I played it when it first came out. And um, Hodge, you had talked about you, you just brought up how you're not feeling it. Um. I could totally get why if you had never played it before, you wouldn't be feeling it now. It's definitely it, it, it was one of those early PS4 Xbox One games, and it feels mm-hmm. so much like a PS3 360 game. It's very I was thinking that. that I was yeah, I was controls. as I was playing it, as I was playing it, I was literally thinking to myself, did this come out on 360? I was like, I was like, I'm like, no, this is an Xbox One game, I'm pretty sure. And then, yeah, that makes sense. That's early on. In the, so, it, in the well, gen. it was released for both. It was released for um, PS3 and 360 as well. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Because, right, yeah, and, it. And the- yeah, because I was like, Dead Space was a 360 game and I loved that game. But mm-hmm. this one, it it has that jank, but kind of not the the good parts of it either. Like where it's like you can look past the jank in Dead Space because the plot, the gameplay and like everything is so fucking good. But in De- Evil Within, I'm like, it's like they got the teleporting. Film. I'm like, this is kind of it's supposed to be supernatural, but it almost feels anime like I'm like, it doesn't. It, well, it is Japanese, not, so. Yeah, I know it is a tango game, so it makes sense that it would have like I'm I'm sure like I'm sure I would lo- like if it has the same kind of feel, but better gameplay. I'm sure I'll love that one that they oh, my God, what was it that they came out with? that was on PS5 first and then came over to Xbox before they bought them. Uh, oh, the um, Japanese. Oh, my God. Doctor Strange yeah. game. Uh, Ghostwire Tokyo. Ghostwire yeah. Tokyo. Like I'm like I'm thinking I'm like I might like that better because it'll have better gameplay. It's more recent and it, but it's still kind of a spoopy game. So I might even try Ghostwire this month just to get a good spoopy game in under the under the belt. But um, since it's on Game Pass, because otherwise I'd buy like RE4 or RE8 or whatever. I haven't played those yet, but um, but yeah. So I'll I'll give it a little more of a try. If it doesn't land, maybe I'll either switch over to Ghostwire or get back to my Alan Wake replay before Lake House comes out. But yeah, I was kind of disappointed, but yeah, we don't have to. Yeah. Talk about this more. So evil within for me, I've never played it. Um, I'm, I'm afraid to play it. I'm not a huge horror guy. I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a pussy. Like I don't really want to be super scared. You know what I mean? Like real life is scary enough, you know, dealing with my normal <laughs> job and normal life. I don't want to also be scared when I'm relaxing. So I'm not a big horror guy. And I've always heard and seen that evil within is like this really, really scary game. Like S tier horror is what I've heard. That's the impression that I have of it. So I've never wanted to play it. Cause I'm like, well, I don't want to be scared like that. 
Um, I will say shout out to Tango, though, because the game that we just previously mentioned, Ghostwire Tokyo, I did play and beat, and I really enjoyed that game. I think that's like a sleeper, a sleeper game that if you're a fan of like open world types of games where you get to clear the map out and enjoy a cool setting and a, and a pretty cool story uh, with a fun combat. That's one I recommend. I enjoyed that one. So I feel like Ghostwire wasn't talked about enough and it had an, I think it has like an 88 on Metacritic or something like it. It's got I'm good think, ratings, what, but yeah, but wasn't yeah. it released? I think it got like lost um, because there was a game released right around it. I think, hang on. Let's I wouldn't go. be surprised. Make them a poor dating. Yeah, yeah. I won't March be 2022, March of 2022. What else came out in March of 2022? Well, let's March usually releases some bangers, so I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if Gran Turismo some... Seven. Uh, let's see, a bunch of games. WWE was it? God GTA War? Five, one of the ports. <laughs> uh, was Ragnarok? No, it wasn't God of time? War. No. Oh well, I mean, Forbidden West came out right before it, and Elden Ring had just come out the month before. Oh so, yeah, and ho- yeah. So Elden Ring, yeah. So, but that'll do yeah. it. Yeah, that makes that makes literally sense. the entire internet was playing Elden Ring and sharing videos and stuff. That was a whole mm-hmm. zeitgeist. guys. So that yeah, game was. That, that, game was I, yeah, I was gonna say because I remember Ghostwire did fall behind something, but I couldn't remember what it was. So that that makes sense. It's a good game though. I recommend it. Yeah. But uh, my other game is I uh, beat Sackboy. Uh, I finally Woo! got back to it. I had, I had fallen off of it for a little bit because of other games and whatnot. But I went back. I, I won't lie. I felt disappointed in the going back to it because after beating Astro, which is a much better game. Like, don't get me wrong. Sackboy is a great game, but Astro is much better, I think. And uh, so I went back and I was so I was feeling I was like, I miss Astro, but it is a great game. I'm not going to go for the platinum because I saw there's a bunch of multiplayer trophies and stuff like that. And I'm not going to I'm not going to deal with that. So I'm not going to platinum it. But uh, other than that, it was a fantastic game. I loved it. Uh, Astro still the better of the platformers in my mind, but I did love my time with it. Uh, it has some great concepts. The designs are a little weird, but I do kind of like the tiny kin, like your honey. I shrunk the kids kind of sized person. Uh, I liked all that. And the villain was really entertaining. I liked it. He looked like a, an evil uh, unraveled, the little string guy from unraveled who looked like an evil version of him. And yeah, it was a really cute game. It's the, you know, the story of you're just kind of the like Lego movie or Emmett, the little nobody guy who ends up saving everybody and he's the hero. And, so it's a cute game like that. I really enjoyed it. But yeah, that was the uh, those are really. the And then obviously I've topped into Fortnite and Space Marine and stuff like that, which are all fun. But don't need to talk about those again. So, yeah, those are the games I'm playing. All right. Sean, you have any thoughts on Sackboy before I get into my stuff? I, I absolutely love Sackboy. I think it's the best platformer on PlayStation right now. I think it's better than Astrobot, But mm. I, I just enjoy the world design of it. I think the, the audio of the game is amazing. And I love how challenge. I think it's a lot more challenging than um, Astrobot, especially when you go into the um, like knitted night trials and going for trying to get everything in one run. I, I think it's much more challenging. So I liked it for difficulty aspects, but... I mean, honestly, they're both great games. Yeah, and now we just need the Astrobots cross Sackboy game. Yeah, I yeah, I um, I beat uh, thirteen of the fifteen Knitted Knights with three stars, and then the fourteenth one I only could get to two. That's the one where the the goal line chases you while you're trying to get the yeah, yeah. time decreasers. Yeah. I couldn't get to uh, minute fifteen. I only got to minute twenty, which is silver. And so I'm like, I'm done. I can't do this. Anymore. The last one is the last one is ridiculous. The last one is. Insane. Yeah. So uh, here. It's yeah. Seeing that enough. that was 14 and there was still one to go. I'm like, I'm not going to bother. I'm, d- I'm done. <laughs> I'm not going to get the platinum. If I were going for the platinum, I'd go for it. But since I'm not going for the platinum, I'm like, you know what? I, I, I did what I did and I'm good. <laughs> so, yeah, it was fun, though. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Some great games. All right. Let me hop into what I have been playing. Um, so finally. The masterpiece, the the chef's kiss, the 10 out of 10, Witcher 3, has been beaten, boys. I've done it. I beat the main game. It was freaking awesome. One of the best games I've ever played. I beat the first DLC, Heart of Stone. Awesome. Really good. And then I beat Blood and Wine, which was, as I mentioned before, this was the highest rated DLC of all time on like Metacritic or whatever for forever, for a long time, until Shadows of the Erd Tree from Elden Ring came out and dethroned it by like a point. 
Um, but this Blood and Wine is a masterpiece. They introduce a whole new setting, a whole new world, which is super awesome. All these new characters, an amazing story where you got like this political intrigue. Uh, the, the kingdom is being attacked. There's vampires and stuff. And it's freaking awesome. And you get to make cool choices. Uh, I believe it's replayable with kind of some different. There are different endings. I got the best ending and I got the best ending with no guide. I didn't look up anything. I just made my own choices and I managed to get the very best ending. I was super happy about that. Um, so apparently I just make good choices. What can I say? You know, um, but <laughs> shout out, shout out to Witcher three. Um, I hope to do a Witcher three DLC episode. If I can get uh, time is busy. If I can get my boy lock and maybe someone else in there, maybe Poot or somebody in there, I'd like to do a DLC on the Witcher three sometime, but people are busy. So I don't know if that'll happen, but maybe, maybe we'll surprise you one day. Okay. So maybe look forward to that, but also don't completely cause it might not happen. So, uh, <laughs> we'll leave it there. That game is freaking awesome. So good. It's in my top 10 of all time. Favorite games, no doubt. Um, and then I moved on, I'm doing some cleanup, right? So we have, as I've mentioned before, once or twice, we have Dragon Age 4. The Veil Guard is coming on October 31st. Shout out to Halloween. And I can't wait for that game. So I'm doing some cleanup, right? So I went back to Dragon Age Inquisition, the 2014 game of the year. Uh, which, by the way, it's funny. Dragon Age Inquisition was 2014 game of the year. And Witcher 3 was 2015 game of the year, I believe. The quality difference could not be, <laughs> could not be any further. Like The Witcher 3 is way better. Like the story in Dragon Age Inquisition is awesome. But when you look at all the other elements, the graphics, the combat, the world setting, The Witcher is just bodying it. Like it's so much better. Um, but anyways, Dragon Age is awesome. I went back. I play in the DLC, right? So I just, I, I picked up where I left off. I loaded one of my recent saves. So I got my character, you know, I'm like some kind of archer rogue or whatever, like level 27. Um, I fought a dragon right when I loaded in because there was a dragon there. So I'm like relearning the combat. You know how you go back to a game and you don't really remember how to play it. So I beat this dragon to relearn how to play it. That was fun. Um, picked it right back up. Now I'm in, in the swing of things. I start the first DLC, The Jaws of Hacken. It's like this basic DLC, kind of mid, 6 out of 10. Like, you know, those DLCs where they just kind of phone it in. They're like, here's a new world with like a super basic quest with barely any yeah. cutscenes, And just just fill up some time here. Have fun. That's what that is. It was OK. It wasn't that great. Then I hopped into the next DLC, which is The Descent, where you're diving down into the deep roads, which is something that's well known to Dragon Age fans, like from the first game, Dragon Age Origin. You're going in the deep world, deep roads, you got the dark spawn. This was a little better. It had more cutscenes. It had a bit of a better story. But again, kind of mid, kind of phoned in. Like, this isn't like a big story expansion. It's just like, hey, here's some content with a, with a slight story. I beat that. Now, my friends... Now we're getting to peak because now I'm getting the trespasser. The trespasser DLC is, is considered by many to be like a masterpiece. Matt, uh, Mr. Matty plays our boy. He always hypes this up. Like this is a true story expansion. Like you could just tell immediately that all the money, all the budget, all, all the production went into this because you have full cut scenes, full voice acting, full choices, full story and uh, discussion trees. Uh, this is, this feels like the real game. Um, this feels awesome. Uh, this is going to wrap up the story and it's going to tie up what happened after Inquisition and lead into Dragon Age 4. So it's the perfect bridge. You get to find out what's going on with Solus. Solus is uh, the Dread Wolf. The Dread Wolf is what Dragon Age 4 was originally going to be called, if you'll remember. Um, so this is going to be awesome. I haven't beat this one yet. I'm in the middle of it. I'm a couple hours in. I'm loving it. So that's what I'm playing. I'll leave it there. Uh, Dragon Age DLCs are getting cleaned up. Um, and then I'm going to have some more time. So I think what's on the docket for me, Sean, I'm sorry. I know I told you I was going to play, uh, JRPG. I know I told you I was going to play, um, Octopath 2, I think is what we talked about. Um, and I am going to play it. I want to play it, but like, I just feel like I need to knock out these DLCs first. I think That's I'm going to play, I think I'm going to play. I think I'm going to play Shattered Space after this, even though it's not getting the best of reviews. Um, I was looking at the reviews for Shattered Space. They've been kind of bad, like a couple good reviews, of course, but a lot of them are people honestly giving it like a five or a six out of 10. Like I think it's at a 59 Metacritic, which is not very good. Um, so I'm sad to it's see that. A, 
It's at a 57, which is the same rating that Redfall has. So I'm just thinking yeah. people are hating on. I, I'm not saying it's a 10 out of 10, but I think people are hating on Starfield because it's the in vogue it's cool thing to do. to do. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, there's no well, way it's from, as bad as Redfall. From my understanding, a lot of it isn't a criticism of like the story, perhaps, but it's more mm. of there's a lot of game breaking things in it and a lot of. A lot of oh, parts. it's buggy. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, maybe I'll wait for that. Buggy. Buggy. If it's busted, yeah, like, that makes very, sense because that's why Breadfall mostly had its bad reviews. Yeah, so. it, it's it's very buggy. Um, like there's aspects where cer- if you have a certain perk on, some characters will, won't talk or they'll Holy only say shit. one line when they're supposed to talk like multiple times. Uh, or okay. you're, okay. you're talking, or you're talking to a character and they're like they're supposed to be right in front of you, and they're actually like they're supposed to be right in front of you, but they're the character's like body is like miles away and they're just talking <laughs> oh my um, god but yeah i guess it's it's it's, it's extremely buggy what the fuck like, yeah why did they why didn't they delay it what are you doing bethesda i don't know i think they they're... i think yeah i don't know if it's really that buggy which i i didn't know about any of this because i've been on media yeah, blackout really i haven't been watching the videos yeah. there's no way they didn't catch that in testing then why didn't they just delay it like what the fuck why release a buggy like product that. Yeah, so that that's where the a lot of the criticism comes from. It's not from the story. People are saying the story is great, um, but like the, some people are just running into these huge problems. The systems crashing. Um, oh wow! It's like stuff like that. Okay, yeah, it's kind of just it's it's a little disappointing. So I I, I mean if I if I were, I would wait like having them Claire my um, Claire she's playing it. Shout she out to Claire. Great. She's she was loving it, loving it, and then she ran into a bug where every single time she opened like um like a crate she had to like she was go- searching for like she was like had to go pick up an, like a specific quest item she couldn't pick it up every time she picked it up the game would just crash oh my oh god. god that's that's unacceptable yeah and yeah. so cannot yeah we, we did some we did some research and it's tied to like a certain perk that you have um mm. and it's like ugh. yeah that's stupid so. I love Bethesda, but I hate them at the same time. Because why do they do this? Like, you had to have known that this game was not ready. Just delay the fucking game. Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, that makes yeah. me angry. Um, maybe they wanted to hit the Halloween Halloween window because I think this game is supposed to have sort of spooky vibes a little bit. I don't know. But it's still, there's no yeah. excuse for that. I didn't know that, Sean. Because um, I've been, like I said, I've been on Media Blackout. I haven't watched any videos. I saw Maddie's video about this wasn't good enough. I didn't watch it because I don't want spoilers. My plan all along was that I was going to play it and that I would probably enjoy it and have fun. But now that I'm hearing this, I think it's best to wait. If it's really a buggy mess, I think I'll just, I'm going to wait. So audible, boom, change of plans. I'm not playing Shattered Space next. Maybe I'll get to your Weebree instead. I'll push, I'll punt that until we get some patches. Once I hear that it's actually working well, I'll go in and enjoy it as it should have been and as it's intended. Um, all right. I, I do want to say I do want to say one last thing. She's playing on Xbox Series X, though, so I'm not. I have no idea about the PC version. I just know about the okay. Series X. Well, I'll play on Series X too because I already own it there. So, okay. um, all right, I'll wait. So that's anyways. That's what I'm playing, boys. Um, I don't. I, yeah, we'll, I was going to recap it, but we'll just move on. So let's go ahead and get into our write in, shall we? All right. So this was a this was a really good write in. I'll read this write in. I really I enjoyed this write in. So this was from the man and the man and the legend meatball. We love meatball. I love meatballs in general. Like to eat them, they're good. You know, you get some <laughs> gravy, some barbecue. Oh, yeah. You know, throw them in a crock pot. That's good stuff. Uh, but meatball is is a Chad. He's a great supporter and friend of the show. He's always listening. He's always writing in, and he's just we really love and, and appreciate his support. And he has great taste. He writes in and he says, "Fun show as always, lads. Once again, midnight has the best list." Let that marinate Balls. for a second. Let that marinate. His top five last week was consoles. So Meatball's top five. He said Game Boy Advance, GameCube, N64, Xbox 360, and then his number one game, Sean, he was right there with you, PS5. So he agreed with you. So he agreed with both with all of us, actually, because uh, Hodge and I was 360. That was his two. And yours was uh, PS5. So that was his one. So he, he he was loving what we were putting down, but he agreed with you, I'm Sean. Great. Hey, he's got some great consoles on there, so yeah. I mean, there's nothing bad. I love the GBA. Good, good call with that. That thing was awesome. Yeah, the GBA looked awesome. I didn't own one, but like the quality of the games and the graphics for a handheld at that time looked incredible. And you Um, shout out to the Game Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance SP, the Game Boy Advance. Okay, the Game Boy Micro. That thing is awesome. 
Mm. I never had an SP. So it always looked so oh my God, the cool. The SP though. is so that that's that's my definitive Game Boy Advance experience is the SP. Dude, the SP was awesome. I always wanted one, but I already had an advance, and obviously there's no way to convince your parents like, can I upgrade this for just to have it fold? And so it was. Uh, I never exactly. had one, but I always yeah. loved it. Yeah, dude, I used to think the SP. I thought the SP. I still, you know what? I used to think the SP was Game Boy Advance super powerful. That's what I used to say. Game Boy Advance <laughs> super powerful. That's what it is. There you go. <laughs> All right. And then he says, my write in for the next episode. What's your favorite gaming related memorabilia you've collected over the years? I recently bought a Kaseki series 20th anniversary poster, which I've hung in the man cave. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, Sean, what is your favorite gaming related memorabilia? Okay. You got anything? So, um, uh, I mean, I have a lot. Uh, shout out to that poster. That's part of the trail series. That's what they're called in Japan. So. Shout oh, okay. out to them. Yeah, I know he's playing through. I know he's playing through the Trails games right now, so it's very special. Um, for gaming memorabilia, I would have to say, um, if we're not including like um special special editions, like like of like games, like I have the Final Fantasy Pixel Collection, like I have that wrapped and stuff. Um, but gaming memorabilia, um, well, actually, you know, I'm just gonna do this. Shout out to this one of my students last year is a really good art student. Knew how much I loved Final Fantasy VII. So, but he made gifts at the end of the year, gifts, not, not, not gifts like GIF, but gifts with a T, um, for all of the students, I mean, all of the teachers that he had and he, he made them like paintings and they were, this was phenomenal. He made me a cloud strife one. It was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Um, and I actually, I have it hanging in my house. It's downstairs, unfortunately. Um, but it's hanging in my house. It was absolutely awesome. And it, it's really cool. Cause it was like homemade and it was like nothing, something I didn't buy. And I, it was so unexpected and I absolutely loved it. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Hodge? Anything? Um, I yeah, I mean, I have a lot of different things that I love. Like I was thinking in terms of actual games, the first collector's edition I ever bought was Kingdom Hearts, so I had this little heartless th- that came with it and I love it. Mm-hmm. But um other than that, I bought the Kakarot special edition that came with the statue of Goku and Gohan on uh, getting on the Nimbus Cloud with a dinosaur chasing them or whatever, or fly next to them. And uh and then obviously I have pre-ordered the Alan Wake one because I love that game. But I also have like the first game I ever bought memorabilia for just straight up, not collector's edition, not whatever is death stranding. I have three death stranding shirts and I have the looted mm. little statue guy. So I love that. But another one I just kind of thought about while you're talking was it's not really like a collector type thing, but I still have a like piles of game informer magazines And it's just kind of cool to open those every once in a while and just see like them hyping up the unreal graphics of a PS2 game. And it's just like it's just such a cool walk down memory lane. And I I, like I was bummed when Game Informer closed because I've been subscribed to Game Informer slash like a a GameStop Pro member for 20 years or something like that. Like it's been a long time that I've been reading Mm -hmm. Game Informer. So when it got shut down, I was I was so sad because I still had it on. I saw the app on my iPad and I'd still not every month, but every couple months I'd go on. I'd still read it. And it was it's such a cool magazine. I remember I got retweeted a bunch on Twitter once with an old account that I didn't have anymore where I I tweeted out like uh, the game informer graph designers deserve a raise because the layouts in that magazine were so fucking cool. And obviously Mm -hmm. me being a graph design nerd, I would notice that kind of stuff. Uh, So I like they all like, oh, that's such kind words. And I'm like, no, yeah, I loved the layouts of game informer. The covers are legendary. And so just kind of having that as memorabilia is really cool to me. And yeah, I'm bummed that it's gone, but yeah, so that's kind of the stuck gaming memorabilia that I kind of think of. Right on. Yeah, shout out to Game Informer. You guys know that I'm old. I'm ancient. Um, I was working at Funko Land uh, in like my senior year of high school. We're talking about, I'm talking about like 2000. That's how old I am. Um, and at Funko Land, we were selling Game Informer back then, all the way back then. So like it, it was a thing. It was awesome. Great magazines. Yeah. They always had good stories and stuff. And that was back before the internet was super prevalent. We didn't have smartphones. So you really you really were reading those things. And that was where you were getting a yeah. lot of gaming news. It was yeah, a good time. Were, it was awesome. Yeah, those magazines were awesome. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, for me, I'm not a huge memorabilia guy. I'm kind of lame, kind of boring. I want to get into it. If I had more space, like if I ever get a house, I kind of want to get like some shelves set up and kind of turn into like a mini GJ from uh, Discord uh, and get like some some statues and figures and cool stuff and start collecting. But I've just never got into it. I've got some gaming shirts. Like, you know, I got Zelda shirts, Halo shirts and stuff like that, which is cool. I would say the coolest piece of memorabilia I got, it's hard to see it's back there. Um, I have this uh, with Star Wars, the Old Republic, the Bioware MMO that came out, I bought the $200 collector's edition uh, and it came with a statue that's like this tall, like, I don't know, like 10 inch tall statue of Darth Malgus. And it's super high quality. Unfortunately, the red lightsaber broke off at some point during a move and got lost. So he no longer has a lightsaber, just the hilt. Um, but yeah, he had his lightsaber out. He's got his mask on. He looks cool as hell. And it's back there. And I really like that statue. I'm very sad that I lost the lightsaber. But uh, anyways, shout he's out to Meatball. Yeah, he is. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's uh, he's a peace guy. So yeah. shout out to Meatball, guys. Write in, please, if you're listening to the podcast currently. Go to the YouTube. Type in some comments. Give us a, a fun question. And you might be on the show. Boys, shall we get into the main topic of discussion? I think we should. Oh, yeah. All right, so today's topic, we are going to be, once again, visiting the decades. We are going to be rating our, picking our game of the year for each year from 1990 to 1999. We're going to start at 1990. We're going to start at 1990. Is that what we want to do, boys? Go for it. I thought we were going to start at 90. Mm -hmm. What do we want to do? Let's decide now. Yeah, let's do 90. All right, let's do 90. Okay. All right, so we're going to start at 1990. What a great year that was. Most of you guys weren't even alive, but uh, I was. I'm I wasn't. But I don't remember it. I don't remember it much. Wasn't even I, was a thought. I wasn't even a thought. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you were a thought. You just hadn't happened yet, you know. Um, I'm sure your parents didn't know each other in 1990. They didn't know each other in 1990, though. Yeah. Oh, wow. I was I was in my mama's belly in, 90, in 1990. All right. So in the year 1990, there were some great games, and I'm going to start it off. My game of the year for 1990 is Super Mario Brothers 3 on the NES. This is, to this day, Super Mario Brothers 3 is my favorite Mario game of all time. It is a classic side-scrolling Mario. It's not 3D, although I love the 3D too. Um, but yeah, this game was freaking awesome doing all the levels. There was also, there was some secret world. I don't even remember what it was. I don't even know if it was a world or a mode. I don't remember how you could get there, but you went in some, some pipe or something. There was like this little PVP mode or something where you were like, you could have two players like Mario and Luigi or something on the map at the same time. And like you were competing against the person. And I don't remember the details hmm. of it. Um, but that was fun. Um, but the whole world, like the overworld was a masterpiece. Like they had like an actual overworld where you could traverse. Um, they had all the levels. It was fantastic. Um, of course the, the cover art is iconic. I can remember it right now. I haven't even looked at it, but I believe it was yellow and it had like uh, the raccoon Mario yeah. on the front, right? It's just iconic. Mm -hmm. What a masterpiece game. Nintendo EAD, the developers of this, they've made, they got to be the best developer of all time, in my opinion. Like the number of bangers that they have made, like all the, all the great Marios and all of the great Zelda games. Um, did they do Metroid 2? I don't remember. Um, I, I have no idea. I'm, but I'm they, sure. They have to be number one, in my opinion. Like, they've just made so many all-time bangers. I think they changed the name. I don't think they're an Nintendo EAD anymore. Didn't they change it to something else? But who cares? It's still them. But that's my 1990 pick, Super Mario Brothers 3. Sean, what say you? That's a fabulous pick, by the way. And that was my runner-up for this year. Uh, I came very close to picking it. Uh, I just want to say Mario 3 is my dad's third favorite game of all time so that's his favorite Ooh. mario game so that's he always prefers that so anytime we bring up mario 3 he's always defending it all right shout Very out to papa mason yeah um my game of the year from 1990 is mega man 3 another three in the series um i absolutely love the classic mega man games like absolutely adore them and mega man 3 is where the series really just like took off and evolved and this is like peak mega man like peak Mega Man, the boss design is phenomenal. Uh, it has my favorite boss in all of Mega Man, and that is Snake Man. I love Snake Man. I was obsessed with snakes as a kid, so Snake Man was always like 
oh, I love Snake Man. He's so cool. Um, ultimately, really, really easy boss. Um, and his power-up kind of stinks to get. It kind of sucks. Um, <laughs> but overall, the level design is awesome. It, 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 yeah, it introduced the slide mechanic that we're all familiar with in Mega Man, and they even have it in... It, it, it's kind of like a the prototype to the dash in Mega Man X. Um, they added new rush abilities for the, you know, the dog rush. Um, overall, I just love like the majority of the boss design is like, I think it's the, the best variety of bosses. You have magnet man, you have hard man, top man, shadow man, spark man, hard snake man. man. I know hard man. Pause. It's very strange. Uh, <laughs> Gemini man, Gemini man used to freak me out as a kid, like the level, because it was like, there's a lot of flashing lights on the screen. And I, I don't know, as a kid, I like freaked out about it. But uh, yeah, Mega Man 3, awesome game. Uh, it's crazy to think how how fast Capcom developed those original six Mega Man games. Like Mega Man 1 was like 1988, and then Mega Man 2, 89, 3 was 90. And then like 4 and 5 were both in 92. Like they came out in the same year. Like how, that's ridiculous. Like these Mega Man games were awesome. But yeah, Mega Man 3, shout out to Mega Man 3. All right, good stuff. Yeah, I never really got into Mega Man myself, oh, but uh, so obviously good. iconic. Hodge, what say you, sir? Any thoughts on those quick or get into yours? Um, Yeah, I never played Mega Man 3. I Actually, I've never been... I've only played a handful of Mega Man games. Like, I have never... I don't know. I did own some on PS1, whatever ones those ones were. But, oh. um, but yeah, I never owned the older ones, but I played them, you know, later on. But... Um, my game of the year for 1990 was also Super Mario Brothers three. Uh, it was always my favorite of the original. Like I played the first one, of course, all the time. It's everyone knows Super Mario Brothers, the first one, the the one one level, the Goomba right there and whatnot. Everyone knows starting that game. But uh, three was always my favorite because it was so cool. And I liked the presentation of it. it looked like a stage play. Everything was hanging or it was bolted to the wall kind of look. And all. so it was always a really cool uh, thing then obviously before the days of the internet when you had to just kind of know the secrets or you heard them on the playground kind of thing and that's how you knew where to go and so i always i just it was always such a fun game and i love it and so yeah uh but these early years you'll we'll find that i don't have too many alternates because i don't it's like I was some years I was kind of lucky to find one. I was like oh yeah I do like that game from that year because <laughs> I didn't because you know I was young I didn't own 10 games a year like I do now as an adult and all that. So it's just kind of mm-hmm. what did I have on the NES or uh, Genesis or whatever as a kid. So that's kind of where it is with that. But so yeah, 1990 is uh, Super Mario Brothers 3. Shout right. out to the airships. Shout out to the airship levels. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So fun. Absolutely. Every level is awesome, dude. The, the, the ice levels where you get to slide down, the water levels where you're swimming. Masterpiece. All right. 19... 19- 91 was also a year that existed, and it was also a year where Mario was king. On the Super Nintendo, the SNES, Sean loves that, we had one of the greatest Mario games ever made, Super Mario World. This game was awesome. This honestly was probably better than Super Mario Brothers 3, but because of the nostalgia and how much I played Mario Brothers 3, I have it rated higher. But Super Mario World, the 16-bit era, the graphics at the time were awesome. The overworld was beautiful. You got to ride on Yoshi, I think. That was fun. This was a great game. I really loved it. I played it a lot. I uh, used to go over to my aunt's, um, and uh, we would play Super Mario World. She was a gamer, and we would just pass the controller back and forth. You know, like if you die, then you pass it off, and uh, we had a great time. So I'm going to keep it short and brief. We know the deal. Super Mario World, awesome game. 1991, game of the year. It's my game of the year for 1991 as well. Uh, absolutely. Game. When we went over our top 10 games of all time, it made my. It was at the bottom of my top 10 list. Um, this game is unbelievable. Um, I replay this game every year, multiple times when I'm bored, I'll boot this game up all the time. Uh, I love the Kate power up. It's my favorite power up in all of Mario. I love mm. just running, getting a sprint with the arms out, running straight up the wall and then, or just running sprint and then jumping with the Cape and floating through the level. I absolutely love it. I love the variety of the world design. So many different worlds. I love Yo- the addition of Yoshi is so cool. Um, I love playing as Luigi as well. They, they gave you that option right away to play as Luigi. Um, but yeah, this this game is awesome. The final boss fight is iconic for me. With um, it wasn't the traditional like you know like Bowser fight. It's like you know you have to um, jump on his little robot Bowser things and throw him up and hit him into the um, the clown the clown um, 
like you know the little clown vehicle he's in um yeah i love this game um so much fun like i every port of this game i buy i bought the gba version i, I bought it on wii virtual console wii u virtual everything it's like this is one of my most bought games of all time love this game love it can't recommend it enough still holds up to today yeah it's perfect hodge how about you and then uh, your pick too um my pick was gonna be actually it was super mario world but i'm going to change it just to have a little variety in this uh i'm gonna go with sonic the hedgehog because this is uh i never i never owned an snes so i didn't play super mario world until i was older and it is a fantastic game i'm not discounting it at all but super uh sonic the hedgehog was the game that i owned because i had a sega genesis and it was so much fun at the time. I mean, going back to it, it doesn't really hold up as much as Mario does. Mario is definitely the better of the two series. But this game was so iconic. Just getting to Green Hill Zone, just dun, 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 dun. Just iconic. hearing that hearing that music. It's just, I love it. It's game. It had so much charm. Uh, Sonic isn't, I mean, obviously it's, you know, getting popular now with these movies out, but uh, it was always second fiddle to Mario, which it should be. It's it is Mario is the better of the series. It's not I'm not trying to play on Sega over Nintendo, but I always loved this game as a kid. It doesn't really hold up, but purely out of nostalgia, this is I loved this game growing up. I played it all the time because I see also these games are back in the day when there's no save files. It was just you're starting world one. Every time you turn it on, you have to you have to be good enough to memorize your way through that level. And so, yeah, I, I love this game. So, yeah, I'll go Sonic the Hedgehog for a 91. That was a that's a fantastic pick because I love Sonic as well. Um, I was a Genesis kid. I had a Genesis. Um, I didn't have a Super Nintendo. I played Super Mario World at my aunt's. Like I said, she had a Genesis mm-hmm. or she had a Super Nintendo. Uh, but yeah, Sonic is an awesome game. Very underrated. Well, I guess it's it's getting some love now. Um, but for a lot of times, it got a lot of slander. Um, but those original Sega side scrolling games with the iconic music and the graphics were amazing and moving fast and getting the coins and stuff. It was a lot of fun messing up Dr. Robotnik. All right. Mm hmm. Moving on, 1992. Now, in this year, one of the most iconic games of all time came out, and I bet one of my co-hosts is going to name it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick something a little bit different. I'm not going to be talking about something in the past. I'm going to be talking about Mortal Kombat. That's my pick from 1992. Mortal Kombat played that a lot on the Sega Genesis with the blood fatality. Finish him. Finish him. So good, dude. Shout out to Scorpion. Shout out to um, Sub Zero. So good. Liu Kang, of course. Dude, just awesome. Really fun fighting. Really gory. They had the fatalities. They had, I think, the babalities, or maybe that came later. There was all this cool stuff. I was never really that great at executing the fatalities. Um, I could do it like a third of the time, and then freaking the other two times I would screw it up and I would just have to like uppercut them. Just super lame. Um, but yeah, great game. Mortal Kombat. That's my pick. I loved it. Sean. So I've never played Mortal Kombat at all. Never have. Um, the only Mortal Kombat game I played was Injustice, which is like the same kind of control scheme, same devs. Uh, I'm really bad at it, like really, really bad at it. Um, but fun fact, um, Johnny Cage, that character, kids mm-hmm. love him. I'm telling you, kids still love him today. Johnny Cage. Hmm. I don't know why. They reference right him on. all the time. They, they, there are kids who love Mortal Kombat still, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah. All right. Do you want me to get to my 1992? Have at it. All right. My 1992. It was very difficult choice, but ultimately it came down to a link to the past. Legend of Zelda, a link to the past. Um, one of the most iconic Zelda games of all time. It's my favorite Zelda game of all time. Um, it's a top down Zelda I played every year. Um, this game blew me away as a kid uh, with the going into the whole dark world it's like you discovered a whole new world uh it opens up it's so dark and eerie with it's raining and you, you have to like go to the castle link go to the castle you have to save zelda um the world was so alive like i talked about in echoes of wisdom it's like the one-to-one almost like the map from a link to the past and that is so nostalgic for me uh the gra- the art style of this game is just gorgeous that 16-bit art uh the music blows me away to this day i still listen to a lot of the songs um, it was just super smooth. It was like the perfect evolution of that original Zelda game. 
And yeah, I absolutely love it. Uh, I highly suggest it to anyone who likes Legend of Zelda, definitely, or just like games in general. This is such a good game. And it's so accessible now to play because it's, you know, it's been re-released so many times on the Nintendo Switch online. Um, so many people clamor for a remake of it. I'm like, this game doesn't need a remake. It's it's perfect the way it is. Um, but yeah, Link to the Past is my game of the year for 1992. Great pick. Great pick. I played it. Didn't beat it, though, but played it. Loved it. It's iconic. Hodge, what say you? Yeah, I actually just uh, I was playing Link to the Past a little bit on uh, Switch not too long ago. It is a very fun game. I'd never I've never played it all the way through, so I was still kind of lost. I have to kind of get my toes uh, wet on that one to see how I play it. But it I was enjoying it from and it is like you said, it is a gorgeous game. I love I mean, Grant, I've always loved the SNES look. It's such a gorgeous uh, art style. So, uh, but yeah, I, it's a good, good choice from both of you. Um, my number or what are we at? 92, 90, 1992 is, uh, one of my favorite games of all time is Wolfenstein 3d. I love this game. I was obsessed with it as a kid. Uh, just fighting Mecha Hitler is obviously the, even though he's like a mid game boss, he's not even the final boss. It's a different dude, but uh, knowing all the secret walls you walk up to and there's a mini gun back there or whatever, and just, just slaughter Nazis, just a fun, fun time. And I was, yeah, I was obsessed with it as a kid. I bought it again on Xbox 360 back when they had Apple arcade hundred percent it there. Uh, yeah, I just, I adore everything about this game. And even though a lot of people like it, you know, it kind of Wolfenstein 3d walks. So doom could run kind of thing. I've always preferred Wolfenstein over doom, but that's, that's just me. I know a lot of people, most people would disagree (laughs) with that. Even the modern ones. I love the Wolfenstein games. I couldn't give a shit about doom. Mm -hmm. if I'm being completely honest. So, uh, but yeah, Wolfenstein 3d, that's my game for 92. What about the all-time classic Doom movie with The Rock? <laughs> I never watched sucked. it. It was so I never, bad, dude. I never watched it, but I just remember watching the trailer, and I'm like, because this is back before there was like a shit ton of video game adaptations, obviously, and I remember watching it, and I'm like, they're not going to do this. They're not going to do this, and they go first-person mode where he's slaughtering demons. I'm like, oh my it god, was- this is so stupid. <laughs> It, you should watch it sometime just because it's so bad. Like, it's awful. <laughs> Maybe I will uh, one day. You might enjoy the, the terribleness of it. Just have a laugh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Shout, <laughs> that's a great pick. Shout out to Wolfenstein, one of the classics, of course. Um, I also am more of a Wolfenstein fan than Doom. I haven't played any of the modern Doom games, like uh, Doom and Doom Eternal. I haven't even played them. I don't know. I've been somewhat intimidated by them. I don't know if I want to play them. I'm not sure if I'm into that thing. I played the demo for 2016 and it was fun. I mean, the gameplay is good, but I'm just not one of those gore for gore sake kind of gamers. And that's really what it is. It's just like, look at how I can turn these demons into bloody chunks. I'm like, OK, that's fine. And then I heard I heard Eternals gameplay is better, but I'm like, I, I just don't. I've never cared. <laughs> it's whatever. Wolfen if you like it, too, it was awesome for machine games. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I played Doom. I played Doom 2016 in. Um last year i liked it but the story is like in like i couldn't even i could not follow anything that was going on so it's literally i just put on and, yeah yeah i put on a podcast and just played through the campaign i was like i just want to play it for the mechanics yeah uh, yeah there you, know. you go all right fantastic pick moving on to 1993 he's heating up nba jam oh. that's my pick this is a, the amazing arcade basketball game Freaking awesome. I think two on two, three on three. I forget. I think it was two on two. two on Whatever. Two. Just two just two. balling out, man. They had they had the actual teams. They had the actual players, of course. Big dunks. They didn't have Jordan. I don't remember that, but yeah, that sucks. The the guy who made NBA Jam was a Detroit Pistons fan, so he always made the Bulls worse. And I think at the time Jordan just wasn't signing his likeness to things. So that's mm-hmm. why he wasn't in it. But the pist the dude was a Pistons fan. And I guess if you ever if something like if you ever shot a game winning three as the Bulls, it would 100 percent miss rate because he didn't want the Bulls to win. So that guy was very spiteful. <laughs> uh, 
pretty screwed up. Um, yeah. But yeah, I love that game. Of course, he's on fire, shooting literal mm-hmm. flaming basketballs, the big dunks. I loved how you could completely like just just mess up people on defense, like just tackle and beat the shit out of them and steal the ball. Like there was no fouls, really. It was awesome. NBA Jam, short and sweet. That's my pick for 1993. What a great time. What say you, Sean Mason? So I also have a sports game. It's a different sports game, though. Mine is Tecmo Super Bowl for the Super Nintendo. It was originally came out in 91 for the NES, but they made a Super Nintendo version in 93. And this is the version that I had as a, well, my dad had, and then I played it as a kid. And me and my friends would play this up and through, through like 2010, through 2011. We would play this game all the time. Uh, We love this game. It was a huge improvement. We had the original Tecmo Bowl on nes and it was a huge improvement because this game had like the players in the game like they had all the players and they had all the nfl teams circa, uh, as of 91 and they had like records and record books and they had like a season mode not a franchise mode but a season mode and they would keep track of your stats which was like really revolutionary at the time um but i absolutely love this game it's, it's such a good like just pick up and play football game it's not like heavily like oh my gosh i need to learn all like anyone can pick it up and play it um it was so much fun to just play and you know we banned the lions because of barry sanders we weren't allowed to use the lions um nope no lions because of barry sanders it, that was that was a no-go and cowboys usually were banned too because emmett smith was insane in the game and they made troy aikman a god because he was on the cover of the game so they made him <laughs> like a freaking god yeah is it the original one that had bo jackson was unstoppable was that yeah, the, that's in the that's in the um, okay. so in the NES version they had a couple they didn't have all the players they had like they had licenses with individual players and Bo Jackson was uh, in the original one but okay. at, there was other, the other players were like number ninety four mm. um, but Super the Super Nintendo version had like the license for all the players gotcha nice okay. right on that's good awesome. pick yeah. yeah I forget Gosh. about the Tecmo games all the time dude they're but so yeah. good they're so good. My 93, and actually, I was so close to picking NBA Jam because I do love that game. I love that one and the Xbox Arcade one. I love them both. I played the hell out of both of them. But I'm going to go with, instead, my, one of my favorite games of all time is Kirby's Adventure. Uh, I knew it. Knew it. Yeah. I love, I love this game. Like I said, it's one of the ones that came with um, the NES that my mom bought just at a garage sale randomly when we were kids. And I've been I've I loved it just ever since because it's it's such a even like take out the fact that he's like a cute little pink blob and, you know, he's just kind of the cute look. He's the cute uh, mascot of Nintendo and all that. Like he's not. To, but the gameplay was so much fun because you, you could fly. You sucked people in and you took their power. So you just always had new powers to use. And, you know, you choose basically based on what you have to do. If there was a guy you, you could. Uh, the bomb, you could suck him up before he falls over and blows everything up. And then you have one explosion to basically one hit an entire uh, s- like screen full of enemies. And it, it was such a cool concept. It had the mini games of like the the crane or the uh, quick draw. And like it was it, I just love everything. It's such an underrated like game because I feel like I remember there was the joke of any time a Kirby game comes out, it's basically the death of the system. It comes out right at the end of the system's life. No one likes the game. And then they move on to the next console. Uh, Mm -hmm. Obviously it was broken with the, um, what was it? Kirby's forgotten lands. Was that what it was called? Yeah. 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 That game was awesome. I loved that game, but that's not what we're talking about. This uh, Kirby's adventure. Yeah. I love this game. It's, it's such a fun. And the, I remember the pride of beating like the, the uh, King DDD at the end and stuff like that. It's such a difficult boss. And uh, yeah, it's, I love this game. So yeah, it's my game of the year for 93. I love the box art of that game. The box art of Kirby's adventure is so good. Mm -hmm. Like I just love it. Yeah. It's sucking away the cover. Yeah. It's, it's great. Yeah. I love it. All right. Great pick. I like that we have variety here too. We're not picking all the same stuff. That's wonderful. All mm-hmm. right, guys, moving on. 1994. I have another sports game for this year. This was a game that I played a metric ton of on the Sega Genesis. You know, I'm a Steeler fan. My Steelers were amazing in this game. It is Sega Sports NFL 95 <laughs> with Joe Montana was on the cover. Um, it had everybody. It had all the players, all the teams. It was freaking amazing. 
The Steelers were so broken in that game. Um, <laughs> that was the year. I think that was the year we went to the Super Bowl and lost to the Cowboys yeah. and Neil O'Donnell through like three interceptions. And they were like rigged. I swear. I swear to God, this dude was paid off to throw those because like there wasn't even receivers in the area. Like he threw the ball right to the defense. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I was so mad. I'm still mad about that Super Bowl. Uh <laughs> Neil O'Donnell to this day cannot come in Pittsburgh. Like he'll get beat up. Like everybody hates him in Pittsburgh. We got rid of him after that. He didn't come back. We hate him. Like he he completely threw the game. But anyways, I digress. Uh, we had Barry Foster was our running back. He was a great running back back then. And man, there was just a stretch run. You would just give the ball to him, and he would just almost always beat the defenders and go on long runs, and it was amazing. What an awesome game. Sega Sports, which later became 2K. It later morphed into 2K, but back then it was Sega Sports, NBA, or I'm sorry, NFL 95 was my pick for 1994. Sean. Interesting. I've never, I, yeah, that was unexpected. I didn't expect that. Um, for me, my pick, all right, it's happened. We entered the JRPG realm. It is Final Fantasy VI. In North America, it was released as Final Fantasy III in October of 1994. This is a seminal JRPG that lovers of the lovers of Final Fantasy, lovers of JRPG, lovers of video games should play this game. This has an insane amount of characters in the game for a Final Fantasy game with all in-depth backstories and characters and full out motives. There's optional party members, which is crazy for the time. Uh, there was like a two completely different worlds in the game like there's a there's a clear distinction and a point i'm not going to spoil what it is but the whole map changes and the whole game just takes on a, like a new life and it's like you have a whole nother like you know at the time long another like 10 hours of the game and you're like this is crazy you have kefka one of the most iconic villains of all time in gaming just a mad lad that kefka guy i used to compare him to the joker all the time so i used to call him he's like, ah, this is a joker ah because he's a he's a court jester um, but the game is unbelievable. The cast is just so good. I love Celeste. Like I love her. Uh, Celeste, sorry, Celeste, sorry, not Celeste. Just thinking of the other game. Um, Celeste, I love it. I just love everyone in this game. The combat system is like perfect for like a 16 bit JRPG. Um, it's just so much fun to just run around that world. The, you have the iconic, um, like, um, opera scene which is like so tragic and so iconic where you're fighting above no spoilers like concert yeah it's not a spoiler you're fighting above an opera concert that's all i said okay. uh just I, i'm gonna play it. i'm gonna play that game that's why i'm saying that i want to i want to do the pixel remaster yep. sorry yeah uh it's awesome i uh, highly suggest it final fantasy 6 aka final fantasy 3 in north america but now it's known as 6 okay you satisfied good Good pick. Um, yeah, the, these Pixel remasters actually just came to Xbox finally, I saw. Um, but yeah, I am planning on playing. I want to play 4 and 6. I've heard uh, Colin and other people say that those are like the seminal iconic ones. Do you agree uh, with 4 and 6? I think 4 Sean? and 6 are I think 5 is better than 4, though. Ooh, but that's yeah. that's not a popular opinion. 5 is really good, but it's, it's a lot of times it's often overlooked because it's in between 4 and 6, which are mm. like the... It's between four, six, and then you have seven right after it, which those are considered like the top three anytime you get like yeah. a Final Fantasy list. So, um, but yeah, they're those all are really on good. my backlog. So I'm going to play those at some point. But uh, Hodge, what you got, man? Yeah, I had actually never heard of that football game that you did. And then Final Fantasy six. That's always one I've heard so much about. And I now that the remasters or the yeah the pixel remasters are on Xbox, I kind of want to hop into them sometime. Um, I don't know when I'll get to them, but I do want to because I I've always heard because I'm obviously I'm a very uh my, most of my Final Fantasy experience is seven in Kingdom Hearts like that's like I played fifteen I fell off uh and then I played a little bit of ten as a kid and eight but that's really it and so I want to get back to these ones because I've always heard that they're just really good and I'd love to check out the pixel art because it just looked cool um Dude, but even, yeah hang on. one yeah. one more thing. Even before, like, you should just go through the art, the original art, like the original concept art for the game. The character portraits are gorgeous to look at. Yeah, I always loved that about uh, like I remember growing up, I always drew like those really 
uh, like, I don't know if it's like paint or what, like the very painterly pictures of Cloud and just all the characters from Final Fantasy VII. I drew those all the time because I thought they looked so cool. And yeah, yeah so I've always hard, I've yeah. always loved the kind of watercolor painting look of Final Fantasy characters. They've always looked super cool. And yeah, I would I would not be surprised how if I loved that as much as you just said. But um, yeah, my game for what are we 94 is uh even though this is a game i never owned i loved it i've talked about it before briefly but it's donkey kong country my like i said my cousin kevin he had an snes and my cousin jay also had one and they would always play these games together and so every time one over there you know if there's a you know second controller i'd hop in as diddy and play with them but not that diddy um uh, (laughs) and (laughs) and uh (laughs) <laughs> yeah and these it, they were just really good platformers and uh i always loved playing them i don't have too much to say about them because as i haven't played them really much since i was a kid other than i hopped in the nintendo online expansion a couple times and played through a couple levels but uh yeah they were just always really fun and so i didn't have too much to choose from from 94 that i'd played so i'm just kind of going with a game that i enjoyed and played a little bit that year and so yeah donkey kong country is the game i'm choosing I still am blown away with that the game's running on a Super Nintendo. Like I mm-hmm. still cannot believe that that it, system is being pushed, and the fact that they they made two more of them that pushed it even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they're awesome games. But yeah, right on. Good choice. Um, yeah, that's definitely a classic game. I was looking up who developed uh, this game. It was developed by Rare. Hey, how about yeah, that? Yeah, rare. Yeah, hmm. rare made the original Donkey Kong games. So. Yeah, Kong. yeah back when rare. back when Rare was basically like Nintendo's golden child. <laughs> well, Nintendo EAD was the best, but I Rare was number two. I would say. Yeah, yeah. I just because I just remember that spinning Rare logo with Goldeneye booting up back in the day. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I just yeah. always remember that. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, boys. Moving on. And we are at the halfway point now. We've done the first five years. I think this is a perfect time to segue real quick. Not really a segue, but just a reminder to the audience, please go on to the YouTube comments. Let us know, first of all, most importantly, who has the best list? We love to compete. We want to know. But leave your list down below. What is your games of the year? We'd love to hear it. We read all our comments. We love you. All right. 1995. My pick here, I'm going to keep this somewhat brief because this is a game I've talked about before. Don't want to beat that dead horse too much. But my game for 1995 was Command and Conquer, the awesome strategy game on the PC and on the PlayStation and stuff. I talked about before how I used to role play. But this game was awesome. GDI versus Nod. It had the live action cut scenes. Really fun real time strategy. Um, Just a lot of replayability. A lot of fun. I really got into it. I'm um, playing all the sides, all the missions, the campaigns, the stories. I'll leave it there. I've talked about it before. This is a fantastic game. Shame on you, EA, for killing Westwood Studios. Rest in peace. <laughs> Sean, take it away, sir. All right. So for my 1995, it's a game I just recently talked about on an episode a couple of weeks ago, and that is Earthbound, a.k.a. Ah. Mother in Japan. Came out in 1995 here in June of 1995. And I'm just going to keep it short because, like I said, I talked about it like, a couple episodes ago. I love this game. It's it's an absolute like fever dream of a JRPG where it takes place in what Japan basically thought of the U.S., but there's like sci-fi aspects. And this game was so complex and complicated. They The game came with the guidebook. Like The guidebook was packaged in with the game. No extra cost. That's how um, crazy this game was. But I love this game, and I really, really, like I said, I really wish they could Give us a modern port of the sequel, Mother 3. Please, please, please. Probably not going to happen. But yeah, Earthbound, great game. Shout out to Ness. Shout out. Mm-hmm. All right, Hodge, take it away, sir. Yeah, my game for 1995 is one that I didn't own for a while. I eventually got it later on because my first one was the third game in this series. But my 95 game will be Twisted Metal. Um, this game, it was just 
so iconic at the time. It's it's such a 90s game. Like if you really think about like the old, I, just, I still remember some of the old uh, commercials and stuff for it, where it was very 90s edgelord kind of like we have an evil clown in an ice cream truck kind of thing. And it was always so goofy. But these games were so much fun because it was just battle royale. But you're in cars shooting the shit out of each other. Each one has their own powers and stuff. These games are so, so, so fun. And I really wish that they had tried again. I mean, I know I think with destruction, all stars, they were trying to kind of tease one and then it, it was Should've so bad. Twisted that, like, Should have been yeah, twisted metal. Yeah. And the, so, and then twisted metal black is honestly my favorite twisted metal game, which is PS two. But uh, yeah, this series is just so cool. It evolved and just really cool, like lore kind of things. And apparently the show's good. I only watched the first episode. I thought it was okay, but not good enough to buy a subscription to peacock for. Um, so uh, yeah, I just, I really, I always loved the twisted metal IP and I would love for it to come back, especially with the success of the show, bring in, Make a new one. I want I want some destructive uh, car memorabilia or memorabilia. I was just looking at my Alan Wake uh, thermos over there. So I thought of back to video game memorabilia that we were talking about earlier. Let's, get that, let's get that sweet tooth uh, ice cream truck for driving around the neighborhood. I used to have the sweet tooth Funko Pop, the the bit in his ice cream truck back when I used to collect them. And then I sold it. And I made a good I made a pretty profit off those Funkos, though. So people making fun of them. I made it. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, twist metal. Okay. I think that's a great pick. I played that a lot with my brother. I enjoyed it. We had fun messing each other up, shooting them rockets. Good times. Shout out to David Jaffe. Um, All right. So moving on to 1996. My pick for this one. Super Mario 64. We're going back. Yes. (laughs) Sean. You read my mind. Super Mario 64. That is my pick. Do it. What what a classic, iconic game. I mean, how it's hard not to pick this game this year. It was so good. Of course, I had a Nintendo 64. I loved it. I was blown away by the graphics of this game, which is funny because if you go look at it now, it kind of looks like super, super janky and busted. But at the time, it was like, whoa, this is freaking 3D Mario. He looks so real. He looks real. That's how I thought. But this game was freaking awesome, dude. In the castle, jump in the painting, go through the world. The first time I ever experienced 3D platforming. It was so well done. Absolute blast. Um, I think I 100% of this game. I'm pretty sure I got all the stars. I did it all. I got the platinum trophy before they even existed. I love this game. Shout out to Super Mario 64. The last Mario game that I really got into and played deeply. I don't know what happened, but me and Nintendo, we kind of went our own separate ways. You know, I started to get into some more PC games. I started to get into more Xbox and PlayStation, but that's my pick. Super Mario 64. What say you, Sean? It's a great pick. Uh, I, you know, I'm not the biggest N64 fan as we went over, but some of the, the games that were good that I liked, I really loved. I loved Mario 64. That design of Mario, I actually really like like the, the, the you know like the, the um pixely design with like the um the kind of curvature design like in Mario Odyssey you could use the Mario sixty four skin I would use that all the time. Well, it was the um, only skin I, really I used like once I unlocked it. Yeah. It was the only skin I used in that game. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but for piece. my game of the year in nineteen ninety six is Crash Bandicoot, the original Crash Bandicoot. Uh, mm-hmm. I love 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 Crash Bandicoot. My favorite. One of my favorite platforming series of all time. I'm not going to say my definitive favorite, but um, this game is iconic for me as a child. Um, the entire Crash, you know, the original Crash trilogy on PlayStation we grew up on, just me and my sister and my dad just playing it so much over and over again. And Crash 1 was difficult. That was like the most difficult one of the original three. Um, the controls aren't the best. Uh, it definitely does not hold up as well as the other two, but I love how different like this game is compared to the other ones. Um, like some of the map, some of the level design is so cool. Like I know the, um, the bridge levels get a lot of flack because of like, um, it's really hard to see. Like, you know, you know, I'm talking about with all the fog and the bridge. They get a lot of flack. I love those levels. I love cheesing it too. Sometimes I remember when I discovered you could cheese it by jumping on the side and running oh. on the rope on the side. But it is still really difficult to do. But I love that. When I found that out, my mind was blown. My dad showed me it, and I couldn't believe it. Um, the hundred percent in that game was so much fun as a kid. It took me years to do it. Um, I'll never forget that. But yeah, Crash Bandicoot 1, traveling to all the different Wampa Islands, going to all the different levels. Um, 
such a good game. So many memories. The music is just so iconic. And Nathan I love Drake's Neo favorite Cortex. Game. Yep, Nathan Drake's favorite game. Yeah. <laughs> um, spoiler. Well, not a spoiler, but you'll find out if you play the Uncharted series. Um, also, shout out to Neo Cortex. Run, um, throwback to Sean Mason's first ever email as a kid. Neocortex64 at Verizon.net. No longer in service. <laughs> Dang. That's awesome. Yep. Rest That's in peace. Awesome. All right, Hodge. How about you? All right. Uh, dude, I've replayed the insane or I bought the insane trilogy when it came out. And yeah, the first one is the hardest by far. <laughs> it is a yeah. very difficult game up until crash uh, four. Crash four is more difficult. Crash four. Yeah. I haven't harder. played that one yet though, but uh, so yeah, the first so one, I actually, I think I ended up falling off the first one, then jumping into the second one when I bought the trilogy, because I was just like, I'm getting so frustrated <laughs> because it is a tough game. I love it. I absolutely love it. I also think about uh, I think it was Digino Gaming did an episode about like Spyro and Crash and they talked about how Spyro the enemies come for you whereas in Crash they were still programmed to basically just walk back and forth they don't yeah. target you at yeah. all so like I Spyro had too. yeah yeah so Spyro like they came out with the technology to have the enemies actually attack you rather than just kind of be there and so I always thought that was kind of cool but um, my game for 1996 it was originally Mario Kart but then I realized North America's release was 97 so i removed it and i'm with mario kart 6 or uh, mario 64 instead as well that game is absolutely fantastic um i obviously i bought that trilogy when it came to switch of the 64 uh super uh sunshine and galaxy and yeah i've always this uh mario 64 has always been such a just a great game people say it doesn't hold up but i disagree i think it still plays really well obviously they get better as they go on uh mario odyssey when you whenever you get a switch to like whenever that comes out if it is back bet you should play odyssey that game is so so good um Mm -hmm. but yeah mario uh 64 is it's such a classic it's yeah the the turn to 3d when everyone's like wow graphics will never get better than this (laughs) and uh but yeah so mario 64 yeah love this game awesome all right awesome pick obviously same as mine so it's got to be the right pick shout out to crash as well crash bandicoot as uh as i, I accidentally just, typed into the spreadsheet but yeah my favorite bandicoot thing was the the commercials where he's just in the, the, the oh, mascot the costume just harassing people that was that that was so fun yeah. i always loved when those. he was outside he's outside nintendo headquarters yeah, yelling, yelling at, at yeah, that's it was, awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, the blowhorn yelling at the building. It was it's, it was hilarious. <laughs> what a, the nineties was great. What a great time. Mm-hmm. All right, nineteen ninety seven. All right, so we had ninety six Nintendo EAD. As I said, Nintendo's best developer of all time. They passed the torch though in ninety seven to the second best rare. My game of the year, Golden Eye 007, was my pick for nineteen ninety seven. I played this game so freaking much couch co-op with my brother uh with my mom's boyfriend who was a gamer but then whoever wanted to play we were we were just getting it up with the split screen passing the controller back and forth if you're doing the story mode but mostly the split screen the multiplayer was awesome dude you know just going at it on those levels it was it was iconic it was the first time i ever experienced and most people ever experienced like actual competitive like shooter first person shooter um the golden gun when you find the golden gun, that thing was obviously broken. It would just one shot everybody. Dude, it was so much fun. I just just hours and hours and hours. Like this defined my childhood. I was in high school at the time. It's just a vibe, man. I would love to be able to go back in time just for one day and play with my brother and play with these people. Just some golden eye once again. Just just awesome. I love it. Um, yeah. I don't know what else to say. This game was a masterpiece at the time. It revolutionized the multiplayer shooter on console, at least. Um, freaking awesome, Sean. Take it away, sir. I've never played Goldeneye. Never have played it. Um, yeah, it was it like doesn't and hold I, up. I probably it doesn't hold up. It's not going to hold up, so I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not even going to attempt to try it. it um, but for my game of the year in 1997, I think we can all guess what it is. It is um, Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, Croc. Croc, the Legend of the uh, Gobos, or whatever the heck it's called. Yeah, Croc. Heck yeah. No, yeah. Final Fantasy VII is my uh, game of the year in 1997. Uh, I've spoken about this game so many times. We did a spoiler cast for it. We did. 
we just talked about it a million times. Um, I love Cloud Strife. I even brought up Cloud earlier with my, you know, gaming memorabilia. Um, game is amazing. So many memories playing it. Um, if you have not played it yet, please play it. That's all I'm going to say. Just play it. Go experience the world of Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Yeah, it is amazing. Check out our spoiler cast if you haven't. We did a great spoiler cast on that where we get into it. I love Final Fantasy VII as well. I considered making it my game of the year, but ultimately I went with GoldenEye because I just played that game so much and it was just such a nostalgic moment in time for me. And as awesome as Final Fantasy VII was, having just beat it recently, um, I think I like GoldenEye more. Mostly because I I like the remakes of Final Fantasy VII better than the original. Um, But it's all great. Hodge. Yeah, and taking um taking kind of nostalgia into it because we're kind of placing it in the '90s, and so I I do also understand that of like in the '90s, Goldeneye was more important to you than Final Fantasy, and even if Final Fantasy VII is, it holds up better than Goldeneye. Uh, oh, yeah. it, it it's yeah, I I I respect the choosing of Goldeneye over Slappers only, no odd job. Um. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i love goldeneye but yeah i'm also gonna go with final fantasy 7 for my game of the year for that year because it is so good i was this is the first year where i was actually looking i was like ah, there's multiple games i could choose from this final fantasy is my correct answer but i also did love croc i said that as a joke but i do love that game and i'm gonna play the remaster when it comes out i love croc too i love yeah. Croc too. and then sonic racing or sonic r is what it's called sega saturn game i loved that game it was so much fun and then also lego island a pc game that i played with my brother oh my gosh i loved lego island it was so good it it was running around delivering the pizza yeah it was awesome and had racing in it and stuff it was it was like it was like an open world like literally it was an open world you were on an open i an open map on lego island and that game was awesome but yeah final fantasy 7 it's one of the greatest games ever made it is fantastic the story i obviously as a kid i just thought it was cool like oh chocobos are cute and like that kind of like you know you play it you don't really understand it but then as an adult you replay like oh this is like a very in-depth story there is a lot to this story it's it's so commentary good on life yeah exactly it's and it's yeah it's one of the best games ever made so obviously i, I as a kid i didn't play it as much as other games like i played as a kid i put way more time into sonic r than i did final fantasy 7 but i haven't played that since i was a kid and i've played final fantasy 7 i've played it multiple times since then but uh yeah so final fantasy 7 game of the year 1997 yeah final fantasy 7 is awesome um there's a lot that i didn't actually experience in it too like i missed stuff because i was kind of just following the golden path a bit uh like i didn't mm-hmm. go to wutai as we mentioned on our thing i completely missed that i don't know how but i did um and then Sean, like in our spoiler cast, he's like, oh, yeah, you know, when I was in this village. I was talking to all these people and learning all this stuff. And I was like, I, I didn't really do that. I just kind of moved ahead. <laughs> so I, I probably should go back and play it again sometime a little deeper. But I don't know if I will. Um, I love the remake so much. So I'm just waiting for part three, man. Can't wait. Can't wait. All right. 1998. So we had a little theme here. So in 96, we had Nintendo EAD. They passed the ball, the ball over to Rare. Well, Rare's passing it back to the king, Nintendo EAD, for one of the most masterpiece games of all time. And of course, Sean, I am talking about Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, the one of the only Zeldas, maybe the only Zeldas that I actually finished to completion. And I love Ooh. this game. Pause. No pause, actually. No. <laughs> Full completion on this game. Um <laughs> This game's a masterpiece, man. Open world or open zone, I guess you would call it now. Zelda, the, that that amazing 3D graphics that they did with Mario, they took it into Zelda and maybe maybe made it look a little better. Awesome world, fun combat, cool story. I love playing the little flute, the little iconic song. Oh, Dude, the ocarina. What, yeah, the ocarina. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah, that would make sense to call it the right thing. It's literally in no, the No, Legend huh? of Zelda, Flute of Time. It was a great game. Flute of Time, yeah. <laughs> I had the bootleg version from Wish. It was Flute of Time. <laughs> Dude, with the golden the golden cartridge? Oh, you know, yeah. The golden... Oh, my God. This game is absolutely iconic. Absolute masterpiece. Easily one of the top 10 best games of all time. Most iconic. Um, I love it. I love it so much. So that's my pick. The Legend of Zelda... Flute of Time. <laughs> Excellent. I love how you picked the flute. You know, 
I came really close to picking the Flute of Time, but I had to go with the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. So I went with the Ocarina of Time version. Um, no, that is my game of the year as well, Ocarina of Time. Um, it's an amazing game. First 3D Zelda game kind of set the set the standard for what 3D Zelda games should be. You know, following the arc where you collect these three things and then the world opens a little bit more and you got to collect more things. Um, the music is just so... Like I just remember just humming these songs over and over again in my head. Mm-hmm. I, I was a terrible artist, unlike Hodge, but I would draw pictures of Legend of Zelda all the time, especially Ocarina. Um, going to like Gerudo Mountain and just like freaking out when you get into the Fire Temple. Like I like would freak out. Mm-hmm. Like, like what's going on here? I need my red tunic. I'm like I can't put my red. T- I don't know how to get the red tunic. Um, and like your health just goes down. Um, the water temple, infamous water temple. I actually like the water temple a lot. I don't think it's that confusing. Um, but I know like my friend Donnie got stuck on the water temple for years, like years and years. And he refused help. My like, dude, I can, I can do it for you. He's like, no, I'm, I gotta do it myself. Absolutely refusing. But yeah, Ocarina of Time, wicked special game. Um, shout out to riding Epona, like just riding around as Epona. Me and my sister would do that all the time when we were bored. So oh, let's go ride around on Epona. So yeah, Ocarina of Time. All right, Hodge. Yeah, Let's this was you. a this was a tough year. Um, Spire of the Dragon came out. Resident Evil Two. I never played the original, but the remake was amazing. Gex Enter the Gecko. I don't care what anyone says. I love the Gex games too. But as it, as everyone knows, I'm a platformer whore. Um, Those will be getting but- remake soon. You know it. Oh, I hope so. I hope so, so much. I love that so much. Uh, But I'm also going with Ocarina of Time. I'm kind of cheating because I didn't play it until it was on 3DS. I played that version first, but it's such an iconic game. It's a perfect game. Uh, And so I'm not ashamed to (laughs) just make it, even though I didn't have the N64 version. I played 3DS, but the game is so, so, so special. It is such a great game that, yeah, everything you guys said, it's there's no debating it. Ocarina of Time is one of the greatest games ever made. And so, yeah, definitely. I just have to go with it for 98. And that's and Spyro is my least. That's my least favorite of the trilogy. So I'm okay leaving it off for this one. But (laughs) so Ocarina of Time is, yeah, 98 for sure. All right, there we go. The Unanimous sweep, the sweep of the year, first sweep we've ever had. Yeah. So my pick for 1999, our final year. This is a game that I know you guys haven't played, and probably 99 percent of the audience out there has not played this game. But this game is one of the games of my my favorite games of all time. I played thousands of hours of this. This was. An MMO RPG on the PC from Turbine Entertainment Software, published by Microsoft Gaming Studios. Asheron's Call. This game was freaking incredible. Amazing graphics at the time. You went into a full, op- massive open world. It would take you 45 minutes to 60 minutes to run across the whole map. It was so big. There was all these towns, dungeons, portals. Um, I played on the server known as Dark Tide. It was the PvP server. If you ever look at my name in various places, sometimes you see my name is listed as Midnight DT. The DT stands for Dark Tide. From this game, Asheron's Call. That was the PvP server. You could attack anybody at any time, in any place. No holds barred. There were no safe zones anywhere. Um, This game developed its own political system where you had guilds um, that would ally and go to war with each other. This whole meta came out where it was like there was PK guilds that would randomly attack uh, and kill players. Like Blood was the biggest one on the server. Uh, They were massive. Um, And then they had anti-PK guilds that were like the honor guilds. They wouldn't randomly attack people. They would try to protect people if they were being attacked, and they would automatically target the PK guilds like blood. Um, So it was like this whole meta, awesome, awesome, fun combat. You could actually dodge projectiles in this. So it had like a casting system where you could shoot like lightning bolt and frost bolt and stuff, but you could actually slide around and dodge the spells. Like it wasn't a guaranteed hit. It actually had a physics system. Like the, the lightning bolt would go in a direction. And if it didn't hit you, it didn't hit you. Uh, it wasn't like just a homing track and guaranteed hit. Just an awesome game, dude. You could, uh, you had swords, you had bows, you had it all. It was, it was, you know, fantasy game. It was so incredible. This game was, 
I just love it. I literally, like I said, I played a thousand hours or something, made so many friends on there. Uh, my best friend, Henry, we played this all the time. There were so many different arcs and so many different metas. We played on different servers. Um, I could go on forever, but I will stop myself because no one else played this game besides me. Um, but Asheron's Call, oh my God. This this was this was so amazing. That's my pick for 1999, boys. Podge. Sean, sorry. Sean. Never heard of it. Um, all right. Next up on for my final game, the game of the year in 1999, we have Superman 64. Yeah, right. No. No, that, game, <laughs> that game. I've never even played that game. I just, I'm not flying through rings the whole time. Now, my game for 1999, this is a tough one, but I ultimately went with Crash Team Racing. Absolutely love this game. I played so many. This is the definitive kart racer for this generation. I'm sorry, Mario Kart. Crash Team Racing is better, in my opinion. Just my opinion. Uh, I played so much of this game. The adventure mode was awesome. It was very much like Diddy Kong Racing's adventure mode, where you actually have like a real story going on. Um, I had the multi tap for the PS1 and the PS2, so we would play this game four player split screen all the time. Uh, just playing through the, the, the iconic tracks. You have Coco's um, Coco's Parkway. You have Pinstripe Sky um, Skyward. Uh, the, the sky map with Pinstripe. There's Pinstripe balloons flying all over the place. You have Neo Cortex's Castle. Just ab- I just love this game so much, and I just. Oh my god, it was so much fun to play a crash game, like a party style crash game where I could just drive around as Tiny the Tiger and just get the power ups and k- shoot people. The battle mode was great. Uh, adored this game, and I'm so happy that they remade it. And it was I spent way too many hours playing the remake. But yeah, Crash Team Racing, iconic game. Let's go. Let's go, Hodge. Yeah, I I've I never heard of Ashram's Call. I looked it up just to see if maybe like I'd recognize the box art. No, I have no idea what this game. Is. I thought you were <laughs> gonna say I looked it up to make sure you weren't making it up. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that that actually should be really funny if you're like, oh, it's an MMO. It's called uh, Michelin's Poop, and I'm like, what? Amazing, anyway, game. Um, amazing, dude. <laughs> uh, my game for 1999 uh, is I was torn because two of them. I mean, I wasn't super torn, but two of these two games came out this year that are both on my top 10 of all time. And the first one is Pokemon Yellow, which everyone knows I love. Uh, That's what I thought you would pick. It's not what I'm going with. I'm going with Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage, which, Ooh, of course, as everyone you, knows. That's what I thought you would pick. Yeah, yeah. So it's not surprising. I love both of those games, but Spyro 2 is one of my favorite games of all time. I think it was in my top three. If it wasn't, it should have been. Um, it's I've it's what made me fall in love with platformers even more so than the Sega Genesis and NES games I played as a kid. Three, I mean, I guess 3D platformer is what it got me into. Uh, I love everything about this game. Every mechanic is fun. The enemy Ripto is a memorable enemy. You get introduced uh, to. Uh, God, what's her name? Elena or something? The 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 fawn lady. Yeah, the little like the yeah yeah. The I deer, the, the deer woman. Um, and yeah, it just it expands because the first Spyro game, it's very fun. Don't get me wrong, I love the first Spyro zero game. Zero voice but, acting. Zero voice acting. Yeah, zero voice acting. You just go around, you save dragons, and that's literally. There's really no plot. It's just the dragons all disappear, and you have to go to each world to save them. I mean, two is kind of the same. You're just going for you're trying to get the orbs and whatnot, but it's. I, I just it had so much charm. I mean, it still does. I, I played it on Reignited. I played it. I platinum it on PS5. I got 100 on Xbox. It's one of my favorite games of all time. So obviously, Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage is my game of 1999. The iconic right. level with those like monk little like the monk. Oh, I used to do that all the time as a little kid. Uh-huh. Yeah, the and they'd sit there going on and then the thing would go with the platform would go yep. up to where you have to go, go and everything. yeah it was yep. uh, yeah i loved it yeah all right fantastic great pick didn't play it but awesome all right go with, guys that's going to do it for us that was our games of the year from 1990 to 1999 30 amazing games i dare say masterpiece game some of these Uh, it was a lot of fun as always let's go ahead and wrap this thing up if we will guys been a great episode thank you guys listeners leave us likes leave us comments put your list down below let us know who had the best list and give us your write-ins for next week's show or well that the next episode i should say uh we will read your question next episode hey 
So let's go ahead and wrap it up here. Final thoughts. And let's start with you, Sean Mason. Final thoughts for episode number 18. A lot of great episodes. We went in the way back time machine here, the pre-Hodge, pre-Sean era of gaming for half of it, basically. Um, but yeah, a lot of good games. Um, overall, love talking to it. Can't wait for, to play some games. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then Hodge, final thoughts for episode number 18 as we're about to get up out of here. Yeah, 2000 to 2019 were super easy to like just, well, I mean, they were hard because you had to choose from a lot of games, but they were easy because at least you or had a game you could definitively say like, this is my game where going from like basically 1990 to 96 was basically like there's one game that year that I really like. And then the rest is I either have never played it or it's it was just a very poor, not holding up 90s game. And so once we got to 97 through 99, those were the years where I'm like, ah, what do I want to (laughs) pick? So, uh, yeah, it was really fun to kind of go down that memory lane of what came out in the 90s and when did I have it and what did I play? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. But and uh, episode 18, our our podcast is legally an adult. So that's how it works. There we go. All right. No more Diddy. All right. (laughs) All right. So go vote. There you go. So um, it's not time to vote yet, is it? Anyway. No. No, Oh, you're 18. You can vote. I got you. I'm a little (laughs) slow. I need more coffee. All right, boys. My final thought, as always, is just thank you to the audience. We love and appreciate you and your support. It's always a blast to get together with my boys and discuss games. We have a great time. Um, It is the weekend. I love the weekend. I'm off Monday. I have a three day weekend and I am going oh, to yeah. enjoy it. It's my first day off in like a couple months. I haven't taken any days off and I needed it. So no I'm going to get some game off. in. I'm going to get some gaming in. I'm going to watch some football. It's going to be glorious. I'm going to go to Whataburger. They have like this new yes. bacon, bacon jalapeno uh, burger that they came out with that looks fantastic. So I'm going to get Ooh. that. Uh, Hodge, you're probably going to miss Whataburger. I don't think it's up there, is it? No, I, the furthest up I saw it, I think it was in Arkansas. I saw one, but uh, when I was driving through, but no Bucky's yeah. and no Whataburger. I know. Well, actually, there is a uh, there's a Bucky's that's opening up in Madison, Wisconsin soon. So I will have one within. Is it really? It's yeah, so. within some drive. I mean, there's one in Missouri too. There, they'll be within somewhat driving range if I ever do want to go. But yeah, I got Whataburger's lunch my last day there because I was like, I'm gonna miss this. I I love Whataburger so much. <laughs> Yeah, this new burger looks amazing. I'll share a picture of it with you after the show. But anyways, we're going to go and get up out of here, guys. This has been episode number 18, Games Over Plastic. I almost forgot the title. Please clap, everybody. You have a great day. Be great. Goodbye. Bye. See you, everyone.